My name is John Davis, and I'm uh, an author in an article that's going to be published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled My Treatment Approach to Rheumatoid Arthritis, along with my uh, co-author, Dr. Eric Madison. And this review article is really based on our work uh, in the inflammatory arthritis group at Mayo Clinic uh, in Rochester, Minnesota, to define uh, a practical treatment approach that we can use for all of our patients. And it begins with the uh, new diagnostic uh, criteria for rheumatoid arthritis that have been published by the American College of Rheumatology in conjunction with the European League Against Rheumatism. And uh, these criteria are uh, much improved over the past uh, diagnostic criteria for rheumatoid arthritis that were published um, in approximately 1987 because these al allow us to make a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis much earlier in the course. And um, this is based on the utility, especially of antibodies to citrullinated proteins, or uh, known as anti-CCP. These new criteria, once uh, they are fulfilled, identify people who um, are at significant increased risk of ongoing disease and especially joint damage over time. So people who fulfill those criteria, what we have done in this article is, is outline what we think is a, a standardized approach to uh, assessment and then uh, treatment according to a defined algorithm. And we base this algorithm in three stages, from diagnosis through six months uh, of disease, then between six months and one year, and then finally an algorithm to address the management after one year uh, of disease from the time of diagnosis. As Dr. Madison and I were preparing uh, this review article, we thought it was important to describe the uh, philosophies and uh, evidence base underlying these recommendations. And it begins with the importance of making an early diagnosis. And that starts uh, with early referral to rheumatologists. And so it's important that primary care physicians and uh, primary providers recognize early symptoms uh, of inflammatory arthritis and make a referral uh, when appropriate to a rheumatologist to confirm the diagnosis and get treatment initiated. And this effect of therapy can take many forms, and in the literature there are a variety of different initial treatment regimens that various uh, investigators have proposed and, and use. And I don't know that there's any one uh, right regimen based on current available data, but our approach is to use um, initial combination of an oral disease modifying agent uh, and prednisone. Another important aspect of our guidelines is that we think it's very important to use a targeted approach uh, meaning that we should shoot for um, a target based on a quantitative composite disease activity score. And for reasons that we, des that we describe in the article, we have chosen to use the Simplified Disease Activity Index, or SDAI, S-D-A-I are the, are the uh, capital letters in that acronym, or the Clinical Disease Activity Index, or CDAI, uh, C-D-A-I. And those indices are very valuable in uh, quantitatively measuring the activity of disease and judging response. They differ in that the SDI incorporates a measurement of an acute phase reactant, namely the C-reactive protein, while the CDI does not include any acute phase reactant. And um, both of these measurements are valuable because they are recommended um, as a means of judging uh, remission, which is the ultimate target of our treatment, is to get complete control of inflammation and induce a state of clinical remission of the rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and these are recommended as uh, quantitative tools to measure disease activity and define remission by the American College of Rheumatology and the European League Against Rheumatism. Shooting for remission is a very important target because we know that people who achieve remission have the lowest um, rate of radiographic uh, disease progression meeting progression of erosive joint damage over time. And in, in the majority of patients, uh, in the setting of remission, joint damage uh, halts entirely. However, we recognize that um, in this day and age, many patients who have had established rheumatoid arthritis for a much longer period of time, uh, it, it may be difficult for them to achieve remission. And so we acknowledge that for some patients, low disease activity, as defined by SDIRCDI, may be more appropriate than the achieving uh, remission as defined by the American College of Rheumatology and ULAR um, guidelines. For patients who fail to achieve um, low disease activity remission at 12 uh, weeks after starting methotrexate and, and prednisone, um, it's important that we uh, augment therapy 
to get better control. Uh, based on our recommendations, we feel that there are several reasonable combinations at this time point. Uh, and we are going to have to individualize uh, these guidelines according to individual prognostic factors. Factors that I would consider uh, as being important would be the presence of uh, antibodies to CCP uh, or rheumatoid factor, higher levels of disability, the presence of erosive joint damage already at baseline, and uh, greater levels of pain or functional uh, disability would be very important. Now, at six months um, after initiation of initial treatment, we describe a number of uh, different treatment options. Of course, we think along the way it's going to be very important, particularly in people who uh, achieve moderate disease activity and, and perhaps close to low, low disease activity but have not quite reached their target to optimize their disease-modifying therapy. Now, in, in terms of the long-term course, you know, beyond one year, um, the algorithms uh, define a number of different treatment options that can be uh, considered. We also acknowledge that some patients may achieve remission and be in sustained remission for a period of time. However, in patients who have recurrent disease activity and, and really experience a flare of their rheumatoid disease, it's going to be important to resume the most previous therapy and to get control again. Uh, moving forward. Now a note about uh, applying these algorithms. Um, they hinge on the measurement of absolute disease activity as defined by the SDI and CDI. But we recognize that in some patients it can be difficult to be sure that the number uh, really pertains to inflammatory disease activity. Some examples of this um, would include the situation of a patient who has very high numbers of tender joints and yet few swollen joints and normal acute phase reactants. We know this can occur in patients who have concomitant fibromyalgia syndrome. We wouldn't want to treat person, uh, a patient in that situation necessarily with, with uh, more aggressive immunosuppressive therapy. So we have to individualize. Uh, in the same way, some patients can have uh, a number of, uh, you know, a few swollen joints, very little tender joints, and can even have subclinical erosive disease activity in terms of bone edema on uh, magnetic resonance imaging. And so there can be subclinical inflammation that's diff difficult to detect and even not detected by um, these composite disease activity measurements. So it's important that we keep all of this in mind and, and practice the art of medicine and really determining um, if the changes suggested by our algorithms are really appropriate for a given patient. Some important limitations of our guidelines to consider uh, are that we really are not entirely certain for all patients of the relative benefits versus risks of trying to attain complete clinical remission versus low disease activity. And this is going to be a topic uh, which needs to be investigated further in clinical studies. Additionally, the uh, guidelines are, have the limitation that we cannot always predict response to uh, given treatments for individual patients and uh, further studies of prognostic biomarkers that are predictive of treatment spo response for individual uh, medications uh, in the setting of individual patients will be uh, very beneficial and could augment these guidelines considerably. Finally, uh, we have chosen to uh, initiate methotrexate as monotherapy with, with prednisone, and um, some might argue that some patients will benefit from initial combination therapy right away with triple therapy uh, or even methotrexate plus a uh, biologic agent such as a TNF inhibitor. And our con consideration is that with use of prednisone as we have defined, uh, we will mitigate this effect for um, uh, many patients. So I hope everyone has um, um, gained some new insights in uh, rheumatoid arthritis treatment, particularly non-specialists uh, in the field or people with um, less experience in, in managing rheumatoid arthritis. As always, I think it's important that, that patients um, uh, have an interaction with a rheumatologist and have supervised treatment uh, with that rheumatologist, uh, ideally on a regular basis, especially early on in the course, so they can maximize the benefits of these medications, minimize their risks and toxicities, and ultimately um, halt the progression of this disease in our patients. Thank you very much. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. 
This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.